Welcome back to Africa This Week. It's been an interesting year with the final days of 2018 creating the need to look back and reflect on some of the defining moments that shaped the African narrative in the last 12 months. In Africa, elections held, winners were declared, people expressed discontent and that leaders were held accountable. With well, the continent looking stuck between a tipping point and a paradigm shift. Joining me on Africa This Week is Tony Dania, a lawyer and political analyst. Thank you so much for joining us on the program this week. Good afternoon. All right, um, looking at, let's take a look at um, South Africa. Uh, let's start from South Africa. Uh, looking at um, the resignation of Jacob Zuma, um, the death of Winnie Mandela, and all that has happened in the Rainbow Nation, what would you have to say? What's your reaction on 2018? Oh, well, um, South Africa, democracy has evolved, and um, it was well planted by um, uh, the late Nelson Mandela, and um, Becky tried, and, but when Jacob Zuma came in, a lot of uh, criticism, a lot of corrupt charges, and uh, some world leaders commended him for resigning, but um, he was uh, like forced to resign. He has no choice than to resign, and um, you are aware that he's facing corruption charges okay. right now. And um, the uh, current president of South Africa, you know, South Africa practices what we call a quasi-parliamentary system of government, uh, they picked from presidential and parliamentary system of government. And um, the, uh, how many years Zuma was there, uh, over five years or so, he, he, he actually, um, it was a big mistake for South Africa. Uh, Zuma was a setback for South Africa, mm. among nations, uh, internally too. You know, he was uh, uh, trying to undo most of the well-institutionalized tenets of democracy in uh, South Africa. Thank God um, they are coming back, and um, uh, I am certain that 2019 will be a good one for South Africa because they are already putting certain economic indices in place that will enhance uh, development too. Okay, but looking at um, what the, the clamor of the labor unions in 2018, uh, what would you have to say? Do you think uh, South Africa's economy has the capacity to uh, grant the labor unions their demand? Uh, well, I think um, the government and the labor are negotiating. Okay. Just like um, in Nigeria, the labor and the government are negotiating. And um, this is not the first time the labor in South Africa has pushed for salary increase and they succeeded, but there is a place they met uh, between the government and um, the labor. And uh, I think um, if um, what uh, the current president of South Africa is currently putting in place is sustained, they will have enough uh, income to sustain a pay rise too. It might not be to the extent to which the labor are asking, but at least I know South African economy is uh, picking up gradually. You know, uh, the economy and uh, the polity suffered so much under Zuma. Okay. Yes, I think uh, the country will be able to meet um, a rise in pay, and uh, labor are entitled to a rise in pay. And uh, the standard practice is that um, I think every five years you are supposed to uh, review salaries of um, labor in every mm. country. So I think um, um, South Africa will be able to uh, meet a demand, not to the extent to which um, the labor is asking, but okay. at least to a reasonable extent, I'm very sure they will be able to pay uh, a rise in their salaries. Expecting that in January 2019. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> but looking at, let's let's leave South Africa's economy and their labor union demands. Let's go to Zimbabwe, where you have um, elections in Zimbabwe. How do you think the elections in Zimbabwe has impacted on the country? The result of the election shows that um, the people are more awakened than before. We have multiple parties, and um, the acting president won the elections, contested among 23 candidates, and he won it narrowly. Now, you, when we read about the crisis in uh, South Africa, you see that few persons came together and planned to own, I mean uh, Zimbabwe, sorry, yeah. to hold on to power in Zimbabwe, the head of the military, the current president, and Robert Mugabe. Okay. It was when uh, he was going to give uh, Anuva to the wife that um, protests came in, 
And um, the head of the military was like, no, this was not our plan. You know, and it is wrong. I thought, um, and uh, I hope, um, what is his name, e Emmy Chills, uh, I, I find it difficult to pronounce the name of that president, Twas uh, Nanga, Shanghai. the president of uh, Zimbabwe. Okay. Yes. Uh, Manangangwa. Manangangwa. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he will not perpetuate himself in power like Mugabe did, because he was part of the conspiracy to hold on to power, uh, to hold on to power in Zimbabwe. It was because Robert Mugabe was no longer following their, you know, seemingly secret okay. understanding. That was why he has to call the third party, which is the head of the military. Uh, look, this man is no longer keeping to... The head of the military has been the head of the military for how long, too? You see, mm. the only military officer there. So mm. uh, uh, Zimbabwe is not yet out of the stronghold of those... Uh, Dictation, few mafia. Dictatorship. Yes, yes, it's not yet out. And um, unless um, the current president changes the method, embraces democra democracy proper, and um, I, I grant a lot of freedom, allow freedom of expression, you know, concentrate on building Zimbabwe. The president was uh, running a dynasty. I mean, a Guba, a Mugabe was running a dynasty. All right. Um, now, looking at, um, you talked about Zimbabwe's presidential election, but let's turn uh, gears now to the Republic of Congo. The presidential election there, how do you react to what is playing out in Congo right now? I just hope the the war in Congo will not become like that of Sudan, mm. and the, whose president have ruled for three decades. The Congo president has ruled for a decade now, and the land at uh, the last uh, minute, he declined that he will no longer contest. That might be good news. But again, I think we should be careful because he might bring in somebody who is a stooge. Uh, uh, the Minister for Interior in the uh, Congo Republic is the one contesting now for the you know, ruling party. And uh, we know that uh, the opposition parties, the, the, uh, what was his name? The man um, um, contesting against uh, the ruling party, presidential election, I've forgotten his name now. Uh, he's a very popular person too in uh, uh, Congo. And I don't forget that Congo is currently ravaged, ravaged by Ebola. And um, we have uh, the militants uh, still fighting there in uh, Congo. Mm -hmm. I hope they will not uh, negatively exploit all this to um, put their own person there. The president is saying, I'm no longer going to contest. But the person that is contesting is the Minister for Interior. And uh, is the one representing the government party. And if the government party wins this election, well, like we can predict that they are likely to win because of uh, they have uh, entrenched themselves and uh, in, in power and uh, they will... Uh, they, they have been, the man has been there for 10 years, so he has been using the... Nothing has changed. The same electoral body is there, you know, the same security agencies are there. The heads of the security, we didn't hear that they were changed or anything. Okay, but if you would look at um, what we have in Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, what we have in Republic of Congo, and what we have in Nigeria, how do you think 2019 will would look at, would look like you know considering the pockets of um, political wranglings we have in this African nations. What does it pretend for us as Africans and even as Nigeria goes to pose in 2019? What does this pretend for us? How do you think the international community will see us? Oh, well, um, Nigeria, I pray, will never become like uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, yes, um, uh, Nigerians. Uh, to some extent, uh, did not get what they bargained for, what they hoped for, you know, and um, the major score of this uh, government has been corruption. But then we still hear cases of corruption. We hear of roads, uh, contract awarded, and um, nothing has been done. And um, cases of corrupt charges against serving government personnel, and um, we are not hearing results. And um, um, the violence, uh, crime everywhere, uh, uh, re uh, retired generals with uh, security details are uh, slaughtered like uh, ordinary citizens. I don't know what mm -hmm. people like us will be faced with. So all these issues. Um, you know, 2015 general election in Nigeria, we all thought it was it would be bloody and um, 
Uh, a lot of people even ran out of the country, and uh, the whole world will not uh, globally. No, the, the United Nations, America, and other uh, nations will not risk Nigeria going into, you know, war or um, uh, issues that will make people to start uh, running out of the country en masse. I, I believe that um, um, uh, by the grace of God, the elections will come. Okay. It is difficult to predict the result, and that mm. is the sweet thing about this Nigeria. <laughs> okay, but, but, but just you know, before we go, yes. but just before we go, um, mm. but looking at um, the human rights issues we've had uh, recently, that's that has been raised by Amnesty International and some other international bodies. What do you think would? Um, what does that? How does that make us look as a nation going forward in 2019? Honestly, the records on uh, human rights issues. Uh, uh, are bad for Nigeria. Uh, let me give you a very recent example. I watched on, I had a post of a woman who was accused of impersonating the wife of the president, mm. and uh, it was at the DSS. Oh my God, it was wrong. What they were trying to do to that woman was wrong, and everybody is silent. I expect the public relation person of the DSS to address us on that. He has not said anything. If somebody is uh, alleged to have committed an offense and you are investigating the person, and you are doing that, you have, it's not that you are, the person has been condemned, you have, the woman has not been charged to court. You have not, what DSS did to that woman is very, very bad. In fact, I've been looking for that woman so that I take up that matter against DSS. That's one case out of No, me. yeah, but it's a recent incident. And the fact that it has not been addressed, if, he, if it is alleged that she impersonated the wife of the president, I doubt seriously if the first lady uh, approves what the DSS did. The, DS, the new director of DSS is just trying to play eye service. I'm very sure the first lady will not even be happy with what they did to that woman. It's very bad. We don't know what has happened right now. No, everybody is silent. Whether the woman is still in DSS uh, 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 custody or he has been charged to court or he has been, we don't know. See, um, we have a lot of cases of uh, uh, human rights abuses here. Uh, the tendency to disobey judgment, to disobey court order, a lot of things are wrong with this country. Thank you so much. I would like to cut you there. Oh We're God. pressed for time. <laughs> Thank you so much, lawyer and political analyst, public analyst, Tony Dania. Thank you so much for coming Thank on you. Africa This Week. Thank you. All right. In the last 12 months, vibrant political and social movements emerged across Africa, largely driven by a growing young population who continue to use social media to challenge failing policies and regimes. If there is any take-home uh, lesson for African leaders in 2018, then it's the fact that position belongs to the privileged and power ultimately belongs to the people. I've been your guide, Sarah Ayuku. Thank you so much for watching and bye for now.